Welcome to the Aftermarket Report Sunday's edition, Wall Street News edition on September the 15th, 2019. Don't forget to ring this little birdie right here and hit that little birdie and follow us on I Love Stocks Twitter page. We got 608 followers, almost, a, oh, that's a good 100 followers in less than a month. So that's I Love Stocks. Miss Vegas is going to give us the watch list. Ms. Yeah, Vegas. good morning, everyone. So, and good morning, Jim. So, we're going to talk about AIRI, CELP, ITI, JP Morgan, uh, Lucky Coffee, and Walmart. And then I really want to close it up with talking about the IWM. So, let's begin. We're going to talk about AIRI. This is um, Air Industries Group. You know, I love the website, really cool. Um, they got two sectors. They deal with complex machining and turbo engine. They've been around for over 50 years. And what a really interesting website. They're into um, deep hole drilling as well. They got two facilities, um, one in New York and one in Connecticut. So the reason I wanna mention this stock here, I mean, you could see the price of the stocks, $1.47. I like that it has a pocket pivot, new 52-week highs, and uh, definitely looks like it wants to have a continuation and potentially have a little bit of a little breakout. I'm going to turn it over to Jim, and let's hear about this one here, AIRI. Yeah, we had a, uh, I, would look, I would consider a triple top breakout. Not a perfect triple top, but we did have a high up here at the beginning of, on a yearly 52-week daily chart of 147. And that's what we hit Friday was that double top on 147 with this middle indicator here right around 144. So, yeah, we hit a triple top breakout. or We haven't broke out yet, but that's what the resistance is. We got a break. It's going to be that 147. I'm going to pull up the three-year chart, just have a look at the three-year real fast. We got plenty of room to, to, to go up higher also. And I want to mark a couple of them in right now somewhere right in this area I'd say probably right around that 158 and then maybe the second resistance is going to be right around that 169 to the 180 Let's pull this back this is AIRI we're going to pull up the 20 day see if I missed anything on the 20 day yeah, it's a nice little 20-day run from a dollar all the way up to 147, and really a nice gradual, just a higher high all the way through, with higher lows. Kind of sloping off a little bit, maybe the little resistance level is going to be this 143 area, and then we got to break that 147 to bring it back up to them other highs. And let's pull them up real fast. We'll go see if we can find it on a three-month. Nope. Six-month. Nope. So we have to go back to the year. So the next reset, let's pull this, find a support level right here. We're going to find this on the yearly, on this triple top right there in the middle. So we got a low support right at 131. If it pulls back, that's where you want it to hold. It can dip on down to this lower support at 120. If not, the resistance that we need to break is going to be that one that I talked about earlier, that 144, that 147, all the way up to 158. A R A I R I. Next one, C E L P. Yeah, so C E L P, Cypress Energy. So this company, um, you know, what they do is they provide pipeline inspection um, and they also provide water and environmental services to actually oil and gas companies. Um, so they work very closely um, with those, you know, companies that are in that industry. And um, they work also with the public utilities and also with the energy companies. So this one here, one to definitely watch. You can see that it had a new 52-week closing, a beautiful pocket pivot, and also a volume surge happening here. So right now we closed here at 865. Can we see nines and tens? That's a possibility. Jim, what are your thoughts on CELP? Well, we broke a resistance, CELP, 
right out of the, I mean, Friday, last week, actually, it had a support level right there at the 34 EMA on the yearly chart at around 754. And I got a 752. So the resistance that we did have to break was that high, and that was going to be right around the 805 area. And once we broke that, she went ahead and kind of pulled back to that from the previous day and hit that then bounced up and created a new high up here at the 890 area so I'm gonna stick with that 890 then I'm gonna put another one right here where we closed at which was right around the 865 then you got an 827 right here these are gonna be kinda of like my little supports I'm gonna pull up the 20 day and look at the 20 day real fast see if I missed anything right here ascending triangle that happened Friday you see how it the higher highs and then it just kind of flattened out and bam it started to break out and then you had the big breakout which ran from 145 a 20 cent breakout all the way up to 890 and pulled back so low support 773 that's a strong buy low your third one's going to be right down here at 805 827 845 and then pivot point 865 with the resistance that we need to breaks going to be that 890 area i expect it to pull back a little bit so that second support area is going to be real strong at 827 if it doesn't hold this ascending triangle at the 845 that's celp and the next one's going to be iti okay so iti this is here i terrace this company um what they do is they do a lot of informat informatics for transportation and uh, what they do is they collect the data from the traffic on the road they collect data on the weather they collect data on the water and what they do is i guess that information is fed to the transportation industry to the municipalities to the agencies um and what they do is they obviously try to make solutions to make the uh, roads safer and to make traveling more sustainable. So, I mean, they're involved in a few different sectors, obviously, but, uh, you know, they're very into weather data, detection sensors, uh, pedestrian and cyclist information. I mean, this is a really interesting company. Um, so definitely can check out the website, um, iTerrace.com. But uh, in regards to the actual stock, ITI, what a beautiful chart. Again, this is just another new 52 week closing high. I'm really loving to see um, these uh, stocks uh, starting to wake up in the small cap market. Uh, we see again, another pocket pivot on this chart and there's a lot of strength in this chart. Um, so I definitely am going to anticipate a continuation on this one here for uh, this coming week. May not be tomorrow, but probably this week. Uh, but you know what? I wouldn't be surprised to see some action on this one tomorrow. Uh, Jim, what are your thoughts on this beautiful chart? Well, what we got here is kind of pulled back to that. We had a double top, triple top breakout at 572 is what happened last week. It tried to break it, tried to sneak up there and, and couldn't do it that one time, 572, and dipped on back, found support down here at 505. You can see I've looked at this one before. I was looking for a breakout on it. She did kind of pull back, and then she just kind of hovered in this little channel between the 505 area and the 572. So we did break that channel last week, as you can tell, 590, and resistance of that 630, and I'm going to go ahead and type at 631 here, right there. Pull up the three-year chart, see if we got any more thing on this, see if we can get this thing can go a little higher also. So we're going to have a long target at 638 for right now with a sneak up attack right in there, right around, oh, I want to lower it just a little bit, right there at 650. So ITI 650 is going to be our long target. We did close at 621. We do expect it could pull back. This is a three-year chart. We do see a high up here of a double top at 782 if it decides to really catch the mustard and want to run so let's pull back the 20 day real fast 
see if I missed anything on this 20 day so we've got a low support right around the 590 area and if that doesn't hold it can pull back to this bottom at six let's say 561 but there's somewhere in this 585 to 590 area is where I'd like to see it hold that's going to be ITI no lower than that then you start getting down here where it had this other top area right around 546 but the resistance that we need to break is going to be this 638 I'm going to say more of a 631 just even start gaining momentum to get to that 638 ITI and the next one is one everybody knows about JPM yeah, so you guys know, obviously, J.P. Morgan Chase and Company, and uh, you guys know what they do. Well, um, they do. You do. So they are obviously in the banking world, and um, you can check what they do. Maybe you have an account there. Okay, so we're going to talk about J.P. Morgan. So we know what J.P. Morgan does in the banking world, and uh, maybe some of you have an account you should be checking this out on the options side. I got to give a shout out to Rich. Called a really good call on the options from 32 cents for the 118 calls. They went all the way to 160. What a beautiful call. Um, but definitely JPM looking for continuation this week. Uh, definitely going to be looking at some option calls in the 120 zone. Uh, those ones are around 139. The 121s are about 86. You know, for those of you with a smaller account, you may look, want to look at the 122 calls um, or even the 123s because those are about, you know, 28 cents for the 123 calls. Um, and we definitely do anticipate JPM having a continuation. But I'd like to hear what Jim's going to tell us because, you know, once I get those numbers, I kind of know where we're headed. So, Jim, let's hear about JPM's chart. JPM. Let me get up. Oh. There we go. JP Morgan. I got one nineteen ten in here for some reason, but let's look at the yearly chart and see why. Probably a good reason why it's telling me that. That was a resistance that we had to break. That was a previous high we had up here at one nineteen ten. We did have created kind of a double top area which is right down here once it did hit that high and pulled way back I mean look at that $91 pour back that's pure ugly so we're going to put a little trend line right in here for the low support right around 116.81 then we've got that 117.92 area probably for your second support with your first one right here at that 119.10 which I'm calling going to call it a strong support because of the previous high that we had down here and then we had that big breakout on it uh, Friday where she bounced up and to create that 120 40 area so let's see what the 20 day chart tells us if it tells us anything at all just says here for the last couple weeks from 104 all the way up to 120 16 dollar bounce low supports gonna be right down here I'm going to call it right around in here, right around the 115.95 area. And then you've got maybe your your second support right here at the 116.81. Your first one at 117.92. Well, let's readjust this. We're going to say this is going to be probably your little pivot point area, the 120.08. And then that first support can dive down here to 119.44 and if that doesn't hold maybe to that 110 I don't want to see it go any lower than the 118.32 then it will start back into this other little channel that we had right in here so actually this is one I'd be watching Monday morning out of the gate the resistance we need to break is going to be that definitely at 120.40 with a pullback support at the 118.35 but you can tell probably exactly how this trade's going to run, what it's going to feel like first thing out of the gate. That's J.P. Morgan. And the next one is Lucky, Lucky Coffee. Yeah, so, you know, I've talked about Lucky Coffee before because, you know, this one here, you know, 
uh, they, they're definitely competing with, um, you know, Starbucks in China and very different because you know that their model is based on mobile and store networks. So, you know, you can't go into this Luckin coffee and go in there and order a coffee the way you do with Starbucks. Uh, with Luckin coffee, you have to do it with the mobile app. And the reason they do this is they want to offer a 100% cashier less environment. And the reason they believe in this concept, they said it improves the efficiency of the company. It lets them be connected and engaged with customers so that when they come in, they can you know, give them their coffee, have a little chit chat with them. They're very into having a very relaxed stores and they want to maximize the convenience with the customer. They don't want them coming in and standing in line and ordering a coffee. And you know what? No offense to Starbucks, but I've done that. I've actually gone to Starbucks and, um, you know, I don't really, I'm not a big fan of ordering on the app, but I mean, I've gone in and I've waited in line and, you know, maybe, you know, I should try using the app a little more often because when you're in line, sometimes you're there for a good five minutes and sometimes you don't have the time to do that. So very interesting concept with how Luck and Coffee is really trying to drive a technology-driven technology, technology driven model to offer coffee. I mean, I think that's really cool. Um, and if you actually go on YouTube and Google, uh, sorry, go on YouTube and actually do a search for Luck and Coffee, you can actually see some video footage of how they run the stores and what they look like. I think it's just totally, totally cool. But anyways, the reason I'm bringing this up too is because it had a nice little run. Um, it did fall below the 50-day support. And at one point last week, I actually was monitoring the stock and I thought, okay, this looks overbought. And then I saw that it fell below the 50 day. But what I'm liking now is it's regained the support at the 50 day and actually crossed above it. So definitely this is going to be on watch this coming week. And Jim, what are your thoughts on Luckin Copy? She's right about that support level. It's kind of like a little first resistance level that 2175, you know, the, the, the lower support was when it was down here below 20 bucks. That had been the perfect time to get in. We're both bullish on this stock, Lucky and Coffee, both her and I are. It's always nice to play the dips on them. And I see another little support level. I'm going to pull it right back right around here, right around the 2097, just right under 21 bucks. Let's just make it 21. Kind of looking at the chart right now. So this. We got the yearly chart. We're going to pull up the six month. Let's pull up the 20 day. We had a resistance we did have to break is at 21.75 with a low support right down here at 20.39. You got another one right down here. So if this thing decides to pull back and not hold this support level of 21.75, that was the old resistance. We did have a double, triple top breakout on a 20 day chart. It can pull back to this 2040 area. And that would be like your second support, maybe your third that has to hold. But there, there is all kinds of room if it stays in this channel. If not, it needs to break that resistance of 2213 to bring it up here just below $23. But this is one to always keep on your watch list. It's kind of a directional move decides which way it wants to go we're on the third day now of moving up last time it was a two-day move down now we're back up broke the triple top into an ascending triangle and the resistance we need to break now is going to be 2213 to 2299 and that's lk the next one's lmt walmart walmart wmt wmt excuse me yeah, that's all right. So Walmart, I mean, everybody knows Walmart. I mean, who doesn't? And you know what? Kudos to Walmart. I got to tell you what they're doing here with the um, grocery store pickup and uh, all these new initiatives that they're doing, doing to um, drive customers to come there and drive revenue is just fantastic. Um, Walmart, again, amazing new uptrend and new 52-week high closings. I mean talk about a powerful chart and a beautiful setup this is a like one that you just love trading and uh definitely will be looking to trade this um me 
and uh, I'm sure many others that don't necessarily want to buy the stock, but we're going to be looking to trade this on the option side. So I'll be looking for some option ideas uh, tomorrow because I need to see, you know, how it's going to open. Uh, but definitely we'll be looking at some option calls, uh, maybe around, uh, you know, in the money and maybe just a little bit out of the money. But I usually like to try to get as, you know, in the money as close as possible if they're reasonably priced and then uh, go from there. So definitely be watching Walmart on the option side uh, for the ones that expire this week. Uh, beautiful, beautiful setup happening here. And you know what? I think the option calls, to be honest, not that expensive. Uh, the ones for 119 closed on Friday around 35 cents. Uh, not bad. And uh, we'll see what those go for tomorrow, though. It could be a different story. So, Jim, let's hear about Walmart. Yeah, I think this is a stock that's finally getting the respect it deserves uh, compared to price. We were down here at eighty-five, seventy-eight last year. I mean, I mean, this is in, uh, this this year, at the beginning of the year, and now she's up here with a double top up here at one seventeen forty-three with a high of one eighteen nineteen, and we did have a little resistance up here at one fifteen thirty-one, and she pulled back to the previous high we had back here at the one hundred five area, one hundred six. They could have gone down a little bit lower. And maybe down to this 103, and that'd been a pretty little thing to catch up. But she now she's created new highs with the double top area, and that needs resistance needs to break. It's going to be that 118.19. So let's pull up the 20 day, see if there's anything on this 20 day. We're going to say support at the 117.24 area. We did close at 117.43. Kind of in this little five-day sending pattern, and I think it can pull back right here at the one sixteen fifty-nine, and maybe if she's low, get right down here, right around the one sixteen area. So this is how I see it: low, 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 low support one fourteen seventy-one, right in here. It's where we had these previous highs. They pulled back there, so that's real strong low support. Your third one's going to be right here, right around the 115.31. Second, 116. And your first, 116.59. With the resistance that we need to break is going to be this 118.12 area. And that's Walmart. And then one we had a lot of fun with last week, IWM. Oh, my gosh. Can I just... I gotta say, patience is important, but you know, you're damn if you do and you're damn if you know, I've said this so many times. So, you know, IWM, you guys know it's the uh, iShares Russell 2000 ETF, really trading this from the option side, spotted the money flow uh, the week before the huge move. We got option contracts around 10 cents, 13 cents. Some people got them 15 cents. I gotta tell you, those were the 154 strike that expired on the 13th this past Friday. Those went, from that range all the way to over $4. Let's just even leave it at $4 at this point. I gotta say a small account would have made anywhere from a two, from a 200, like let's just say they bought 10 contracts. They would have taken like $130 and selling them each at $4 each if they would have held. And there was no reason to really sell these contracts. I mean, the stock, the money flow going in here is just crazy. I mean, Jim could show you a picture of the money flow that's been going in just on Friday. Um, there's been apparently a total of about $3 billion going into the IWM, which is fantastic for the small caps uh, market. Um, I think that's great. And I think we'll definitely see a continuation. We've basically rolled up the calls where we got new ones that expire this week. Um, so very excited about this. If I would have held my option calls, I would have made so much more money. But you know what? I was up 1,000%. And you know what? I had to take the profits. I mean, I sold really early. I mean, I sold around 85 cents and I even sold the rest at a dollar and two. So that was very good profit for me, knowing that I bought them around 13 cents average. That was great. I was so excited to take that. But let me tell you, when I saw it go to three and four the next couple of days, I was like, what? So you know what? You just got it. I mean, thousand percent. You got it. Like, what would you say, Jim? You were up a thousand percent. You'd be taking profits, right? Oh yeah. 
Oh, yeah. So there you go. But there's always a chance to revisit the trade and find a new setup. So let's hear about IWM. IWM. I think we heard all we really need to know about it. It was a wonderful play last right. week. The options, I mean, just... I played McDonald's most of the week and then IWM. You can tell by how we, we were down here in a little channel, this 146 to 150 area. And we actually had a low of 144.21. And then last week we were talking about this all throughout, the, you know, all week long. And we had that big breakout on Wednesday and Thursday, or Thursday and Friday. And Friday she kind of just, and, and, and Thursday and Friday she just kind of settled around, but you were able to play the dip on it. And it hit, did dip down to this 34 right here, EMA, and bounced up and create that new high at 158.92 so this is IWM I'm probably gonna to have to clear these lines out and start fresh that we played this so hard last week let's bring it up to the one we did have a descending pattern IWM in the close you can see by the higher lows descending where it kind of fell back into that little channel of support again and that's no lower than that 157.20 that I had here and I can adjust that up a little bit, and if I do, it hits these things right in here, just based on these candles right in here. I could adjust it right here to the 150, 157.23 up three pennies, but that, that's not going to mess with that. So let's pull this back. So we've got a descending pattern that it identifies with the IWM. We have a bunch of resistances. If it decides to go ahead and start turning up, if not, this might be one that you want to watch and see if it goes below the support level of 157.20. If it starts to hang down here, that might be the time to maybe jump in this trade and play that reversal plate back up to these resistance levels, which is going to be that 157.78. That's the one we got to see. That's the one we got to break. That's the resistance. Then you got all them other resistances that you could bring it up to, to a high resistance up here right around the 158.86. That's IWM, and that's it for the Sunday's edition. Today on the Aftermarket Report, please, I'm going to go ahead and pull this up. I want you to ring the bell, subscribe to our YouTube channel. We have do have a YouTube link right here, plus you'll see it on the video below us. Subscribe, ring that bell bell for future updates we also have our little uh, stock twits page on here and you can hit that follow button it's on our main website page you can hit that follow button and follow us on stock twits and also on that twitter page and that's right down below it and that'll bring you right here to that i love stocks miss vegas yeah i just want to share a couple uh, testimonials here if you go to them i sent you a screenshot there um, I mean, we are all about, you know, helping people and, you know, like just sharing genuine testimonials from people. I was just checking in with uh, some of the members just to say, how's your week? How's your trading week going? Uh, you could see uh, one of the traders, Figran, mentioned best trading week ever, made $800 from the calls. Uh, he did talk about, you know, I love that he's honest. Like he said, he got a bit greedy, held on a bit longer. But you know what? He is following the money and he is learning a lot. And that's what I love. Um, the other one, JK, I mean, JK up a thousand bucks this week. Again, look what he said, learning a lot. So this is not just about being in a room. Anyone can be in a room, but you know, are you learning? And that's really what it's about is learning and improving your trading abilities because you want to be able to also find your own ideas and be independent and, um, you know, find good setups as well. Uh, that you can share or, you know, that you'll trade on your own. I mean, you want to be able to do things um, on your own, not rely always on scanners and things like that. So I'm really proud of uh, the fact that, you know, we've been uh, a great help to many people. And this is just a sample of the ones I just got in the last 24 hours. But I'm just really, really excited for them. And I love it because it just reinforces that we work really well as a team. We're all about helping each other. And, uh, you know, feel free to come by and check us out. And uh, love to see you guys. Have a great weekend and see you tomorrow. Jim, anything else to add? No, that really sums it up pretty good. We are great. 
we are a good team and we like to share great ideas and and just just a very happy society we have put together so this is I love stocks and today's date is September the 15th 2019 and let's have a great coming week I love stocks Thank you.